Good morning all. I thought I'd do a bit of work on the vocoder today. Uh, here it is. This is the front panel uh, with some pots and some knobs. I don't have enough so I ordered some more. Um, these are the boards that I've got so far. If I can get this to fit on my bench. That's the output mixer board. Three pots there. That's the slew rate uh, PWM board which has the 556 which I made up to 2555. So that's a recent video. This is the excitation board, which is just a noise source, really. It's got oscillators and the noise generator that can make ch type sounds. This is the uh, microphone preamplifier for the speech board. There's an identical one of these, which sits here in these four holes. And then there's an LED PPM uh, bar graph thing, which is this board. Uh, one sits there, that's for the music input board. And one sits there, and that's for the speech input board. So today I want to do a bit more assembly on the excitation board, this one here. I've got one of the oscillators running. Now the problem with getting the second one running is that the pots for it are underneath. And I don't have a sort of clearly thought out method of getting the pots uh, linked onto the underside pads on the board yet. It really needs daughter boards. But I'm just not sure whether I want to go to that trouble or whether I'll just run little wires across. I don't know yet. So probably what I'm going to do today is get the uh, noise source running. Now we have seen the noise source uh, a couple of times before, I think. I built a separate uh, board with the noise generator. It's a, a linear feedback shift register, pseudo random uh, noise signal generator type thing. But uh, there's one on here with its own pot. And possibly today what I want to do, one of these oscillators I know works. I did that last time when I partly assembled this. I'd like to get the noise source working and then mix with its own pot, it and the oscillator, into the general mixer, which I think is that op amp there. First thing I need to do though is take that board off the front panel, undo these nuts, and then I can work on this on the bench. And for that, I need my 10 millimeter spanner, loosen these four pot nuts, and undo all these nuts and washers. So I fitted uh, two sockets for these two CMOS chips. One is a 4030 and one's a 4006. Uh, these are both 4030 so I think when they came in I just pushed them into the sockets for the hell of it. I don't actually remember which is which so I just need to uh, take one of these out and put the 4006 chip in. So on my schematic for this board, uh, U7 here is the 4030 U8 is the 4006, and on the Pair Sebe, uh, so U7 is the 4030, that's the one furthest away from the pot, and U8 is the 4006, and that's the one nearest the pot. So I'll just sort those chips out. Oh, I've got a feeling my 4006s are still in an envelope somewhere. I'll dig those out and I'll put them in. So I bought 30 of these green and black knobs. I quite like the green and black, but I must admit I don't think these are as nice as um, the original ones, but I can't find these now. They're not quite as pretty, are they? But they'll have to do. Uh, they're a bit raggedy as well. The insert there has got lots of flashing on it. Yeah, preferred that one. I'll keep an eye out for those, but I just haven't got enough of these to populate the whole panel. And this envelope says uh, CD4006, so this should be, I've uh, got five of these, and that says HCF4006, good, now I've forgotten which one <laughs> goes where on the board. Okay, 4006 is the one nearest the pot, so this has to come out because it's totally the wrong chip. I don't really like these pullers because they suddenly go on you. No, I managed to get that one done without it flying out and now I need a 4006. I'll have to cut the tape on there. It's quite interesting this uses a 4030 quad exclusive OR gate and there is a 4070 which is a, a replacement for the 4030 and it's a quad exclusive OR gate and it took me a little while to work out quite why the 4070 replaces the 4030 and apparently there's just something wrong with uh, I think it's something to do with the input levels on the original 4030 they didn't get it quite right so they replaced it with the 4070 and there are some articles online uh, about this but uh, yeah the 4070 kind of adheres more to the CMOS specification 
the 4030 just didn't. So bend the legs on this a little to just bend them in a bit. A little bit more on that side. And that can go, whoops, can go in here. Pin one is there. So that's got the correct chips in the correct place. Now, one thing I did on this um, was Q2. I've put in my schematic a 2N3904. This is essentially a digital circuit, so it doesn't really matter what transistor it is. Uh, the original Vocoder project had a BC182, I think. But since I've done a 2N3904, I'll put in a 2N3904 because I'm not sure what the pinout, uh, there may be a difference between the two transistor types. So yes, I have deviated by having a different transistor from the exact original circuit. But uh, something like that where it's in a digital circuit and therefore its characteristics are really unimportant. I'm not really bothered if that's a different transistor. You're certainly not going to hear the difference. It's not going to make any difference to the sound quality. So there's a little audio mixer here. It's really these three resistors which pick off uh, the two oscillator signals from the two level pots. This is one of the level pots. The other one is underneath, which of course isn't fitted. So I can probably only have one oscillator coming in. This missing resistor here, R24, actually picks off the signal from this pot. And this pot is the volume or level pot for the noise generator. So I'll need to fit that resistor. That then um, puts all three signals into this 741 op amp. I think that resistor there might be the feedback resistor. And we can pick the sound off, I think, at R26. That's where we should hear the combined oscillator and noise signals mixed together. So let's get soldering. I think the first thing I'll put in is this little transistor. I shouldn't have to check the orientation of that. It fits completely flat to the board because it's got a tiny little footprint for that thing. Let's get that glued in. These um, transistor, these compact footprints make soldering quite tricky because the pads are quite close to each other. And this one is a ground one. Is that on the camera? Yeah, it is. So that's going to need heat. But that's gone on. Oh, yeah. So let's do the middle one. And the far one. So that's the transistor on. So R37 here looks like it goes to the base of the tranny. Uh, yeah, base of tranny 22K. So that's my 22K there. Uh, R41 comes out of the noise generator into the pot. So that's a signal going through there. And that is 15K. Right, we need some components to run the main oscillator here, which uses two of the exclusive OR gates. We need 330K, a 220P capacitor and a 27K resistor that gets an oscillation going there then this is the shift register 18 stages and then there are various feedback taps to create pseudo random noise the main output coming out here onto the pot and then that lets us adjust the level so let's find all these uh, capacitors and resistors right i think this is what i need uh 103 10n 333 33n 221, 220 puff, 101, that's 100 puff, 330k and 27k. Right, 10n, 103, that's C10, that goes there. I'm going to have to do these all separately, I think, because I need a bit of blue tech to hold them in. Well, perhaps I could do two at the same time. I like to take my time on these things. I'm never in a rush. Okay, let's solder that one in. Does that have a grounding pad, I don't think it does. So that should go in nice and easy. Okay, cut that one off. And then we've got uh, C11, which goes across the volume control, is 33N, there it is. And finally, uh, we've got this R42 and C12. I'll go to the schematic for that.
And that is uh, here, I think it's plus 12. So in actual fact, this CMOS circuit is driven from plus 12, but through a 3K3 resistor. And then there's a 10 microfarads to ground. So that I think it's intended that VCC comes up slowly uh, in order to boot this linear feedback shift register in a known state. I'm pretty sure that's what this is for. Now I ran this circuit off 5 volts when I built my little standalone one. So I've never tried it on this network, but uh, it should work. So I found a 10 micro farads. Uh, now it's 25 volt and that goes from I think plus 12 to ground. So that should be more than enough. And that goes in C12 where I haven't marked polarity. So I'm going to have to work that out. Uh, so the mixer is this 741U4. R25 is 100K. That's the feedback resistor from input to output. So it's got a gain of 2 because the input resistors are all 47K. There's another one up there. There's a 4K7 here which moves on to the next stage. Comes from the output there. So that's where I'm going to pick off my signal. So R26, 4K7. So I think that's it. I think that's everything needed to get the oscillator, uh, which we have heard because I, I fired that up when I first started assembling this. But now also the noise generator. So the oscillator level pot is this one. Noise generator level pot is that one. Frequency and shape. So I need 1202 power, and I just need uh, to pick the audio off here and feed it into my... Uh, active speaker. So let's set up power and the amplifier. So for power I'm going to use 5 volt from these uh, batteries uh, through this uh, inverter which is gives you 12012. I've got that on a... Oh, I've also got the 5 volts on there. That I think that's for the bar graph but this one I can plug into here. So let's do that and then get uh, my speaker. Right, I have power, I have audio. Here's uh, the audio going off to my speaker. I found a suitable ground point uh, there, which I've shoved a wire into. So let's pick it off this resistor and get that to fit in there. And there's the noise, which I can raise the level of and lower it. Let's just move this up a bit. Here's the um, oscillator. So I can mix the noise and the oscillator together. The frequency is here. So that's the maximum frequency. And it goes down very low. So it's just a clicking, really. And there's a shape facility here. Which you can hear as a phasing effect. It'd be nice to get the second oscillator working because then you could get two note chords and noise from the uh, pseudo random noise generator. That pitch seems to be changing, <laughs> drifting over time, probably. But yeah, that all works. So my noise generator works. That's the important thing. That sounds good. So I'm just going to make sure that um, this reboots because this is a digital circuit. So this does have a sort of boot up sequence. That's my audio connection. And you can hear when I take the power away, the capacitors keep it running just for a little bit. That works really well. Very pleased with that. Uh, that's probably all I'll do today. But uh, yeah, obviously you can see more work needed on this board. Now there are going to be some mods to this board because when I put this ribbon cable connector on here, um, which goes off to all the filter boards, there are seven filter boards sitting above this. And so there's going to be a sort of daisy chain of ribbon cable connectors with an additional connector coming down onto this board. Um, I didn't really know how the filter board was going to be laid out. Now I've done the filter board now, I've sent it off, it is on its way. But I made um, some changes to the positions of these wires. 
I've moved uh, these four down to the other end and then there's another signal which is actually that um, 22 volt PWM square wave I was doing with the 556 that comes in here and that's well separated because I felt that the big square wave at one kilohertz might interfere with some of this audio so um, also all these points are ground so on the ribbon cable every alternate wire is actually ground which kind of helps to keep all the signals separate but there are something like five grounds between these audio lines and that one kilohertz square wave now that needs to be rerouted off to this top pin so they kind of swap over because it just worked better on the filter board to have them that way around so these have all got to be cut and mod wires put on the uh, probably on the bottom because I can't actually get in here once the connectors on there so I'll put mod wires on the bottom from the respective points on the board I think there's a couple of points down here um, and then also I'll put a mod wire on to shift this signal up to this top pin there and then I think the ribbon cable will match uh, the filter boards to this excitation board the other thing I had to do because the ribbon cable obviously doesn't twist terribly well is set the distance from the front panel to this connector on the filter boards exactly the same as I did on this board and actually that worked quite well on the filter board so um, there won't be any sort of distortions or misplacements in the uh, ribbon cable so it's going to be very interesting when I get the filter boards and uh, start making up this ribbon cable which distributes signals coming from here to all of the filter boards yeah that's going to be fun but uh, for the moment that's it Cheerio.